Hey, welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips, I'm David. Today we're going back to the basics again as I finish up our two-part Ultimate Bow Drill series. Last time we covered how to collect your raw materials and make your bow drill. If you missed part one of this series, click the box on your screen to check it out. Now in this video, I'll show you how to use your kit to get the Ultimate Bow Drill Fire. Come on, let's get started. In part one of this series, we talked about the parts of a bow drill kit, the tools you need to build one, and how to make, select, and prepare your bow, hand socket, fireboard, and drill spindle. Now it's time to burn in our fireboard. To do this, we'll be using the same technique for powering our bow drill as we'll use to get our ember. Now before I go any further, make sure you never place your spindle or hearthboard on moist or wet ground. To avoid ground contact, place your hearthboard on a thin dry stone, dry leaves, or some dry tree bark. Now let's try out our bow. Here's the position you'll need to be in to operate your bow drill. Place your weak hand side foot on the hearthboard while kneeling on the other knee. This foot position holds the board in place and stabilizes your weight. Now twist your spindle on the outside of your bowstring at the midpoint of your drill. Next, place the fat end of the drill in the divot that you carved in your fireboard and the thin or top end of your drill in the hand socket divot. Hold the bow with your strong hand and position it parallel to the ground. Now with the slightest pressure downward on the drill, lean forward comfortably with the wrist of your socket hand braced firmly against your thigh for stability and leverage. Now holding the bow drill firmly and with a medium amount of pressure straight down on the spindle and keeping the spindle close to a 90 degree angle to the ground, begin to operate your bow in a push-pull movement. Continue at a moderate smooth pace. Now increase the intensity of your strokes and pressure until you get a good amount of smoke for your effort and your drill end and hearthboard divot are a real nice charcoal color and a perfect fit. If you're not getting much smoke after a valiant effort, your hearthboard, spindle, or both are probably not seasoned enough. To confirm this, look at the burn marks on your spindle and board. If either are more tan than dark brown or black, that's a sign that your wood is too wet or full of resin. See the difference between these two kits? The one with the light brown burn marks was not able to produce an ember. So don't waste your time with wet wood. Grab some of the other materials you collected in part one of this series and make a new drill, fireboard, or both. However, if you got a nice dark looking burn on your fireboard and the bottom of your drill, it's time for the next step. Now we need to make a pie notch in your hearthboard to catch your ashes and form a coal. Using your mini saw or knife, cut a notch about 45 degrees into just about the center of the burn circle on your fireboard, like this. Make sure your notch is cut keen and clean, especially where the cuts meet. Now before we try to get a coal, Make sure you have a large, dry bundle of tinder. You can get coals all day long, but if you have crappy tinder, you're not going to get a fire. For tinder, you can use cotton balls, dryer lint, or stuff like natural twine that's pulled apart. But in the field, a pile of fine wood shavings, cedar bark, or dead dry weeds are good things to look for. Now before we go any further, make sure you have a fire all set up and ready to go. I recommend a teepee fire. And last but not least, you need an ember or spark pan. This sounds kind of fancy, but for an ember pan, you can simply use a large dry leaf, a thin piece of bark, or something like a piece of paper is fine if you have it. Now place your ember pan under your fireboard and pie cutout to catch your ashes and coal, just like this. Oh, and one last thing, make sure your tinder and teepee fire are close by. Okay, now we're ready to see if we can get an ember and make a fire. Again, start with moderate pressure and speed, gradually increasing your speed and pressure, and then once you start seeing smoke, give it all you got, maintaining a good pace. Smoke is good, but doesn't mean you have an ember, so keep going, the smoke should get thicker and thicker. Now when you think you can't go any longer, don't stop. Keep going until you literally can't go any longer. If all the conditions are right, and your kit is perfect, and your technique is good, you may just have an ember by the time you run out of steam. You'll know you have an ember if the smoke continues to come out of the pile of ash on your ember pan after you stop working the bow drill. To encourage your ember and get it glowing, 
waft over it with your hand. If you blow on it, do it very gently so you don't blow it away or get too close that the moisture in your breath extinguishes your ember. And most importantly, be patient. It may take a minute or so to nurture your ember until it forms and carefully tilt and pull your hearthboard away, leaving your ember behind on your ember pan. Now fold your ember into your tinder. Now blow on your tinder surrounded ember until a good amount of smoke comes out of your bundle. Then hold your tinder slightly above your mouth and nose and blow up into it so the smoke doesn't inhibit your ability to provide a continuous stream of fresh oxygen until it ignites. Once your tinder bursts into flames, put it in your teepee fire and enjoy the warmth. Now if you don't get an ember on your first, tenth, or even fiftieth time, take heart and keep trying. Take your time and if you don't succeed, keep moving forward by coming back and make sure you have all the details right and try again. You can make a bow drill fire, but it's going to take some practice, patience, and persistence. To check out part one of this two-part series, click the link on your screen or the one in the video description on YouTube. We've just taken a look at how to make the ultimate bow drill fire from start to finish. For your convenience, I've placed links to all the gear that I've mentioned in the video description on YouTube. Just click the show more tab under this video. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more gear reviews, survival tips, and survival news, check out ultimatesurvivaltips.com. And while you're there, grab our monthly survival e-mag. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter to get the latest news and be the first to hear about the great gear giveaway contests we have planned. Okay, this is David. I hope to see you on the other side and remember, be prepared because you never know.